Hey, welcome to Studio 5326. Let's take a look at this table build. So I made a trip over to Birdall Sawmill out near Bastrop and found this awesome piece of mesquite. Uh, the customer had been wanting something unique and I found this curved piece where it has this curved grain. Um, he wanted a, obviously a round coffee table. So I sent him a picture of it and told him the price and he said, let's get to work. So I got it home. Uh, and started building the form. Here you can see I'm kind of doing a rough layout. Uh, I had the main piece and then I'm looking at other pieces and you know seeing how they can possibly fit in this form. It's actually uh, the form base is uh, melamine and it's uh, I wanted a final dimension of 60 inches so uh, I went about 61. Here you can see my forms all set up ready to go in mixing some epoxy one thing to note when you mix epoxy make sure you're mixing it for five to ten minutes with a drill one time i did it for uh two or three minutes and it never set up um you can see did a good job on this form not getting any leaks so after you go ahead and um i like to seal the seal the top with uh, either shellac or maybe clear epoxy just to prevent it from staining the wood uh, but I go ahead and flood it and then, you know, let it dry for about a week. So here I'm taking the form off the epoxy, uh, almost off, a couple screws to take out right here. Uh, and then I just have to separate it from the base. Uh, it's very important to use mold release. Um, as long as you do that, it's pretty easy to get these off. If you don't, uh, you're probably going to have to machine it out uh, with a router or something. It would be pretty much a nightmare so always use mold release so a few bangs get the edges clear and there we go now it's time to flatten it so something this size I went ahead and picked up the woodpeckers uh, slab flattening mill this thing works great here I actually didn't have my uh, side spacers far enough as you can see I can't quit get all the way to the edge of it so I had to rotate it. If you're doing this, make sure you've got plenty of clearance on both sides for the router uh, to get over. It'll just make your life a lot easier and you'll get a lot less burn marks. Um, I think some of the burn marks with this are inevitable. Um, not really that big a deal. Uh, here I've got 40 grit on my uh, Rotex and I'm looking to go, I mean obviously this is sped up, but I'm trying to go pretty fast just to keep it flat. And there you can see that's what it looks like after 40 grit. Uh, another quick shot. You can see the epoxy has quite a bit of scratches, which will obviously have to be cleaned up in the final sanding. Uh, here I've sanded it up to about 100 grit, and I'm just getting a, a quick little water pop just so I can get a preview of what this thing's going to look like when it's done. I always love this part. kind of keeps you motivated, keeps you going, and you can kind of see what you're working towards. Still a lot of work left to be done, but... I'm really liking how this thing is looking so far. Here you can see at this angle, you can really see the grain and the figure in this uh, Texas mesquite. Just, wow, beautiful wood. So after that, I uh, kind of wait till I've gotten it sanded to about 100 grit before I start uh, cl cleaning up the edges. That way, if it gets dinged in the shop, it's not tearing it up. I actually used the Shaper Origin to cut my first hole and then uh, or cut the outline out. And now I'm just flush trimming the rest of it to that line, giving myself a final dimension of 60 inches. So Schaefer Origin, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's a pretty cool tool. It's essentially a CNC machine you can bring to your project. So it has some overlap, but I mean, it's essentially a super easy router to use. So now that I've got it cut to size, well, I've got to make sure before you start routering, you get that thing stable, that's better. So you've got a stable base to work on. So here all I'm doing, I'm putting a roundover on one side and a chamfer on the other. So I just want to subtle, I think I used an eighth inch roundover bit, and I just want a subtle roundover, and then I want that chamfer on the other side uh, just to give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look. So again, this is the Festool uh, 1400 router. It's a you know, great router. Um, so 
now it's time to start looking at the base. So I went through a couple designs uh, on the Shaper 3D app and sent them to the customer just, you know, kind of getting some ideas of, hey, what, what kind of base. Anyway, we'll see that base in a minute. Funny thing to note here. Well, here I'm getting the material prepped. I spent about three days working on the first base. Uh, thought I had it about done. Actually, I made it too tall. I had to cut it off, and it actually ended up breaking the base, and I had to start completely over. Luckily, I was able to reuse the legs. I just had to redo the center supports and refill my domino holes and all that, but I really like how the second base turned out. I think it was... Uh, it actually turned out better than my first idea. So it's funny how sometimes we go in and we design something, uh, get it planned out, and then once we actually get in the shop and start building, uh, reality sets in and, you know, sometimes a design has to change. So after I've got that, I kind of, I've got my template there on top, which is uh, attached to the leg with double-sided sticky tape. I use my Shaper Origin to cut out my templates after designing them on my iPad with a Shaper 3D. And here I'm actually just using that to I rough cut them on my bandsaw, and then I'm looking to flush trim them uh, to the template. You can see here as I'm going, I'm trying to go real slow so I don't catch that end grain. If you catch that end grain, which I did, you'll see in kind of the uh, further on in the video, but it'll just with this mesquite, like you get some serious blowout, cracking and splitting the wood. Uh, so a kind of better way to do this is to have that end part a little bit longer so you're not touching it and then you can just clean it up on your miter saw or on the table saw with the sled so important to go slow uh, here I'm actually using a quarter inch collet uh, router bit I think for something this long you might be better off using a half inch I've actually had a couple of these breaks so obviously we can wear some eye protection and here I'm using a starter pin so I can keep my fingers well away from the the bit. So once that thing is flush trimmed, you can see here I made a little jig uh, just out of some scrap wood. Uh, I used my template to set it up and that's how I ended up cutting the angles that I needed on that uh, on those legs. So another way here I'm cutting the stretchers for the table base one that was actually a failure but you can see this is a great way to uh, safely uh, and quickly make you know re repeatable cuts, repeatable tapers. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to buy an expensive taper jig. Uh, you can just build your templates and use your templates to uh, set up your jig. So if y'all want to see a tutorial on how to do this, there's several out there. But uh, if you'd like, I can you know make one in the future. Just drop a comment if you'd like to see a tutorial on. Uh, how to build a little makeshift router sled for doing tapers or cutting legs or uh, you know any kind of any kind of cut like this. So here's uh, one of the pieces that busted off on the router table. Uh, see that one? I glued it with this one here. And see, I don't think I let the glue dry all the way. So this one, yeah, you can see it kind of moved. So. That one I had to scrap and start over. Uh, this time I you know, found a piece that matched pretty well with the grain and went ahead and used some uh, box tape on there to get some tension on there to get it to glue a little bit better. And there we go. That one's, this one's on there solid. Now I'm just using some hand tools to clean it up. Uh, using flush cut saws. Here I've got a different saw that I can get up flat, uh, flush against the bottom. Just getting it started going slow trying not to break this piece trying to get it as close as i can and then i'll come up and clean it up with a hand plane so big part of woodworking is you know you're going to make mistakes um but it's like we just have to be creative with you know covering those up i mean not really i mean covering them up but i mean we just got to be able to fix them if you've already got you know, an hour or two into making this leg and you get a little chip, you don't want to start all the way over. So, you know, grain matching, getting some hand tools and practicing this will really take your, help you elevate your woodworking to the next level. So here, just taking off a little bit at a time, just getting that thing flushed up. 
Um, with these, if they're sharp, I mean, you can get it pretty much a finish ready uh, surface, uh, but you can always come back in and clean it up with sanding. Here I'm using a little shoulder plane, just touching it up and then going back to my block plane. So here we can see, it looks pretty good. The finished product, like I pointed it out to the customer and he could not even tell once it was all sanded and had finish on it. Here's another piece that blew out that was a little bit more drastic. So I went ahead and uh, cut it out to get a square angle and then found a piece with pretty good grain match. Got that glued up and there we go. So here's the first base um, that ended up breaking which was very frustrating because I'd spent, again, probably two, three days on this base. And here you can see kind of right here it already going, and when that leg kind of starts wobbling, my joint there just, it wasn't the strongest, and it came apart. So here you can see I actually made this base somehow, my measurements or my template um, with my coding going from the iPad app to the Shaper app, you know, made it two inches too long. So here's my second base. After I've got my legs the right length, I went ahead and went with a half lap to connect them. And then I half lap them again to put that thing together. And then here I am cutting some mortises with my Shaper 3D. And then I have a floating tenon that'll go in between the base and the table. So we can see here, I actually used my Shaper Origin to cut these mortises. And this was, uh, kind of the moment of truth, like, wow, well, is this thing gonna fit? And fortunately, Shaper Origin, super accurate, freaking got it in on the first try. I was pretty pumped about this. So here you can see it's a little bit long. Uh, I did that just so that it'd be easy to get out after I've got everything dry fit. Uh, I'm gonna take it back apart, give it, uh, I don't know, a day or two of sanding, and ready to for finish. So here I'm using a uh, the Osmo finish. So here what you do is you put it on there and then take your uh, your Festool sander and put a applicator pad and start buffing it in, really letting it soak into the pores. And here's what it looks like kind of after the first cut coat. You can see there's not a whole lot of sheen. Still got a got a sticky look to it. It's probably not cured all the way. So I'm going to let this one dry a little bit and then we'll come back and put on another, uh, probably another two or three coats. Kind of each coat we put on just ups the sheen just a little bit. So here I am, you can see here, uh, I think this is probably my third coat um, and I'm just buffing it in. So I like to go in there and buff it in then let it dry. Um, and after you build up a finish uh, like this, you can go in there and just flatten a little bit with 320. And then depending on the sheen you want, you can buff it out all the way up to uh, whatever grit you want. I think I went up to uh, about 2,000 grit on there with uh, some of the Aberlon pads on my Festool. So here you can see that was the, the, here's the bottom of it. And again, when I'm finishing it, I finish both sides at the same time. So I'll finish the bottom first, then I'll flip it and do the top. You don't want to put finish on there and then let it sit overnight because your project... Uh, your tabletop may warp and we want to keep this thing as flat as possible So here it is all Finished up. It's got finish on it and it is put together and assembled Just use here's my attempt to make a little photo booth in my garage uh, Didn't work so good have to look at some other options in the future and Here it is in its final resting point. So I hope you liked the video uh, Give us a subscribe and we'll see y'all next time.